place them back into your hand and see your hand of power upon these gifts so that you might multiply them and use them in this world to make a positive difference in the, in the lives of our families and friends and neighbors. So bless uh, what was given this day and bless the giver. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
fellow by the name of uh, Peter Graves, and uh, uh, there was uh, several others in there, Greg Morris, I believe Susan Day George, and there was a whole cast of, of characters in, in that show. Boy, I, I love that show. And it would usually start, Peter Graves would show up on the scene, and, and he would go over and walk over to some guy, and he'd say, uh, boy, that's a sun, sunset tonight, isn't it? And the guy would say something like, uh, yes, and, it, and the sun is really reflecting off the water over there by the boathouse. And uh, he would nod his head, he'd walk over to the boathouse, and there he'd go inside the boathouse, and there would be a tape recorder. And uh, the tape recorder would give out that week's impossible mission. And Peter Graves would stand there and listen to the tape recorder, and once the tape recorder was done with telling him about the impossible mission, it would self-destruct. And it would burn up and there would be all kinds of smoke. And oh, it was just a, a fun show. And, and then he would meet with his uh, Mission Impossible crew, his task force, and they would plot out step by step how they would accomplish this, this impossible mission. And, and then uh, using their intelligence and using disguises and these rubber latex masks and uh, high tech wizardry, somehow they would pull off this impossible mission. And as I thought about this week's scripture, it just reminded me uh, of a scene from Mission Impossible. During the, the days right after the resurrection, Jesus met with his disciples several times, and he kept saying that there is this mission that he is going to give to them. He is going to give to them this special mission, and they might think it was impossible, but he was going to give them this mission, and they were going to accomplish it this mission. Listen to Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Now, to the disciples, this sounded very mysterious. They were very interested in what he was talking about. What in the world is going to happen? What kind of gift is is he going to give us to accomplish this, this great mission that he has been uh, speaking about? And so, Acts 1-6 tells us, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They assumed that this mission was going to be restoring Israel as an independent nation. Of course, Israel was under Rome's rule. They didn't like being under Rome's rule. And so they thought, well, this must be the mission that's coming our way where God is going to somehow empower us to restore Israel as an independent nation. They had no idea about how big God's plans were for them and this mission that God had said. God's mission impossible was to bring the knowledge of God and God's kingdom not only to Israel, but to the entire world. They would be entrusted with the mission of turning the world upside down for the kingdom of God uh, through the message of new life and hope in Jesus Christ. Now, how would they accomplish this seemingly impossible mission. Verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. That mission impossible would be made possible by the presence and power of, of God within them. They were going to be a, a, equipped with something the world did, had never seen before. Talk about uh, the old show's technological wizardry. The Holy Spirit empowering these believers was going to turn this whole world upside down. And so, with the empowerment uh, of the the Spirit, these disciples uh, receiving the Spirit of God did exactly what Jesus said. Jesus said, you're going to start here in Jerusalem, 
were going to go forth in Jerusalem. And of course, Jerusalem was the capital of the southern kingdom of Judah. Then he said that it's going to move up north to Samaria. Samaria was the northern capital of Israel before the, the Assyrian Empire defeated it. But it was going to move up to uh, Samaria. And then Jesus said, then you're going to take this message to the far reaches of the world. Man, that's exactly what happened. Uh, it, it started small there in Jerusalem and spread up to Samaria. Then it went out to the far reaches of the world. Within a couple hundred years, even the Roman Empire, who severely persecuted Christians, those first couple hundred years, even the Roman Empire began to embrace uh, this story of Jesus and the new life and, and the uh, forgiveness and grace got offered through him. And the whole world was turned upside down. What kind of message did they share that had this kind of impact on world history? Well, how, how they shared it and what they shared is very simply, they shared the glory of God. Now, what does that mean? When most people hear the words, the glory of God, that they have this nebulous understanding of what those words mean. What is the glory of God? But very simply, when the glory of God is revealed, the very nature, the very character of God is revealed. And that's important to understand. That's what these believers brought forth into the world. They began to reveal the very nature, the very character of God. And when people begin to understand who their creator is, that God is the giver of life, God has given to all of us life, that, that God is the source of life and the source of all love, that God is the provider of everything, every breath we take, all we have, God is our provider, that God is the extender of forgiveness and, and mercy and grace. When people begin to see the glory of God and understand God's character, they are drawn into that relationship with God. And that's what happened as these disciples went out empowered by the Spirit to share this message. Jesus told his disciples that their mission was to bring God's glory into the world and unveil God's kingdom into the world. Now, one of the great benefits of entering into this relationship with God and entering into uh, this relationship uh, with God and His kingdom, one of the great benefits is what Jesus said is eternal life. Now what in the world is eternal life? We picture in our minds what eternal life is. Well, that doesn't start, that eternal life doesn't start till we die. And then we go from this world to the next and we begin to experience eternal life. But that's not what Jesus said eternal life was. John 17, 3. Now this is eternal life, Jesus is talking to his disciples, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Now that's interesting. Jesus said when we begin to know God in this relationship with God, and the character of God is revealed to us, and the presence of God enters into us and becomes a part of us, we begin to know eternal life here and now. It starts now. We begin to know the life of God. Jesus said that life of God is eternal life. It goes with you through this life and into the next. It never dies. That's what eternal life it is all about. And it happens when you enter into this relationship with your Creator. Uh, and I thought about that. When, when we meet somebody that has an impact on our lives, we are changed. We become changed people. I remember 44 years ago meeting my wife for the first time. And a spark started, just like that match uh, on the beginning of the Mission Impossible show. And that spark started, and I began to, to change because I felt like she and I were being drawn together by, by God. And as we got to know each other and as we grew together, both of us became different people because of each other. Well, that's exactly what happens. 
in a relationship with God, as you grow, grow close to God, as you draw close to that relationship, His God's presence within your life changes you, and you become a, a different person. And so it's exciting uh, as you begin this relationship, when you start this walk in this world, you become a different person, and you begin to see God's purpose for your life. You become connected with, with a fellowship, like this fellowship. And that fellowship, you begin to see God's purpose for that fellowship. When a church experiences the life of God, the Holy Spirit flowing through its members, then the mission impossible becomes possible. One proof of that is like 30 kids standing down here today. The mission impossible becomes possible. And we get excited about that because we can see God working in our lives, in each other's lives, in the lives of this fellowship, in the lives of these kids. Listen to what Jesus said. Matthew 19, 26. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. What does that mean? In other words, as individuals, as we embrace that relationship with God, whatever God calls you to do as an individual is possible. He will empower you. God will empower you. You will accomplish whatever God calls you to do. And then, as a church, as we embrace God's mission for our fellowship, that mission impossible becomes possible. Amen. Let's turn to our uh, final hymn, 51.